I'm terribly sorry. I will not be speaking. I'm sick from the plane. Very good from up here. But uh, Matt will do the heavy lifting for me. I will be back for the question. And uh, he will update you on all the stuff we are doing and what we are planning. So I hope you will enjoy. Alright, thank you, Jim. Joe will be returning with us at the end for Q and A and things because he's the man who knows everything. But yes. Uh, so, uh, what are we talking about here? Uh, a bunch of things. This is a little bit of you know state of Bruce prayers. Um, you know, you guys came today. I hope you've all had a chance to come to our booth and you know check out all the things that we're doing. We have the the big exciting announcement this morning of the the Bruce of Mini, um, uh, a totally affordable. Uh, entry into the, the Prusa family. We really feel like it's a printer for everyone. Uh, it's a great starter printer, but it's a great printer if you're looking to build a bot farm. Uh, we're super excited about it. Our first entry into a 32-bit board, uh, full-color LCD, USB printing from USB sticks. I keep saying USB printing, but realize that that sounds like pretty cable. No, print, put in a USB sticks. No more clunky SD cards that break us and fail. USB sticks, one click print from there, you can pop in a USB stick, your first thing, your last thing you sliced is right there, click, it's going. Little little bed means fast heat up time. So that thing from, from click to print, you're printing it under a minute in, in PLA, which is great, which is really amazing. On top of that, built-in Ethernet, and we will be releasing our bot farm software, which will help you manage the printer. So if you are looking to put together your own bot farm, we're gonna show you how we run a 500 plus bot farm and you can do it yourself. Um, we really think this is exciting, you know, coming at a three, three, $349 price point, like, it's a cool thing, right? Like, I, re I remember a few years ago that we were paying over $2,000 for our printers, you know, even a few years after that, $1,200, you know, the idea that we started getting these low cost printers, you know, that were coming in the $300 range was really amazing, but we were sacrificing a lot of things for that. This is a sacrifice part. This is getting what you want here. Um, that, that being said, our classic Mark III isn't going anywhere. Um, we've had a lot of people asking us today, you know, oh, well, when is the Mark III going to, you know, get the, the updated color LCD? When is it going to have all of these things? Even more, is it going to happen? I can't really answer for you right now when, but, you know, it's pretty obvious. We're, we're going to pass that on. You know, it will get there. Um, and I know a lot of you have also been upset about, you know, oh, you know, we wanted a big printer. Well, we've got you covered there too. So, yeah. uh, the XL Pro will be coming. We're going to talk more about that in Q1 of next year. But rest assured, if you want a big printer, we will have you covered. We're, we're trying to build an ecosystem where there's a printer for everyone, but also those who, who are, are building larger printer services, larger printer farms, don't just have to rely on buying a bunch of big printers because they need them, or a bunch of little printers because they can afford them. Everything works together, and you can pick the printer that works for the job that you need to do at the time. Um, and I think this is a really exciting environment to so you can move forward with. Uh, you can find that with, with Crucimit. Um, filament systems. Uh, we have the highest tolerances in the market right now for uh, for orality and dimensionality of our, our filaments. Uh, I've had a couple people even come and say, can you please explain to me why no one else has as tightly wound and perfectly wound spoons as you do? Know, you know, we take a lot of pride in what we do. You know? So, <laughs> yeah, we're not giving away the secrets, but, you know, it's... It's a, it's a really great product. It really does help, again, if you're trying to move into a more production environment. You want to be able to show that the, the material that you're putting into your machine to create your end parts has certain tolerances. And on all of our schools, we have a laser-edged QR code where you can, you can take a picture of it with your phone, go to a website, and look at every millimeter of that entire school and see how what the dimensionality of it is, what the ovality of it is, and verify that you are getting what you're paying for and that your end product will have the result that you want it to have. And, you know, 
this is something that we really think sets our filament aside from a lot of the other filament on the market. Now, that being said, we know it's hard for you guys to get it here in the US. We're working on that. Uh, I was just told, how many more extruders did we get, Joe? Yeah, four, four more extruders arrived on our filament line uh, right as they were leaving to come here. So we are we are expanding our lines. We're trying to pump out more filament. We know you guys like it. We've already worked on a, on a deal with DHL for the new shipping costs. So if you're ordering you know, two, two or three kilos of, of filament from us, you can get cheaper, ship, cheaper shipping than it used to be. So we're still working on it. We know you guys all want it on Amazon. You guys want it so much on Amazon, we can't ship it here fast enough to keep it in stock on Amazon. So we're getting there. Bear with us. It's it's coming. We know we know it's good. We know it's a great product. We know you love it. We're working on it. Um, the SL1 is fully shipping. Um, if you're if you're ordering now uh, an SL1 fully assembled, a couple of weeks, two three weeks lead time, uh, you you will have your SL1. So. We know some, some people are concerned about lead times on them. They're shipping out. Um, uh, on the mini, of course, we talked about place your order now. We're hoping to ship by the end of November. That's the plan. But, you know, they're, they're going fast. The longer you wait, the further out in that, that timeline, it's going to be. Um, here's a slice. Yes, and I was like, I know there was something else that you want to say. Uh, one of the exciting things that we're doing with Bruce's Slicer, a lot of people have been coming to us and asking, you know, we really like Bruce's Slicer, we like what you're doing, it's a great slicer, but I'm tired of having, you know, Bruce's Slicer to, to run my Prusa and Cura, uh, whatever edition to run this other machine. We hear you, we are going to start adding in profiles for uh, for other third party machines in the Bruce's Slicer, so you're going to have one slicer to rule them all and you know, get what you need. So yeah. One of one of the big things about that is you know keep giving us that feedback, keep telling us what you need. Um we should actually talk about why I'm even up here talking. Uh Joe brought me on to be head of community for uh for Bruce, very specifically here in the US. I am your conduit to, you know, getting things into the you know, crazy check world over there of, of uh, what's going on. So if you guys find features that you need, if there's things that will help you get your jobs done easier with the printers or make your life better with the printers, let me know. Uh, many of you, you know, if you, I, I've talked to a bunch of you, I sent out emails inviting people to come to this event that were locals. Um, that is my actual email. We didn't get a some kind of mailing list or anything. I sent you an email from me so you can feedback to me. Um, if you don't have my email and you want it, I'd be more than happy to give it to you. I want your feedback so I can help make this whole system better for all of um, One of the big reasons why I came in on this is uh, I, I've been in this community for a long time. I've been, been doing 3D printing since 2009. In 2011, I went to work for the Thingiverse as a Thingiverse well. Um, it was like a dream job to me. I was going to like make this thing that I saw as like game changer, world changer, you know. We were going to make it easy for people to share not just ideas but actual physical objects. Well, that dream's kind of gone, right? Thingiverse is, Thingiverse is dead. It's, or it, it's living along in a slow, painful death. And so Joe's heard me rant uh, for years at Murph and other events about how we needed to create a thing of first replacement. And uh, last October, he's like, oh, we're, we're doing it. You know, come on board and, and, and take care of it. And I was like, well, I can't right now, but, but I'm glad that you're doing this. Well, in June, we had that conversation again. And I said, all right, I'm on board. Let's, let's get this community off of Thingiverse and onto a new platform. So in, what was it, March you launched Bruce Printers? Somewhere around there. So March we launched Bruce Printers. Bruce Printers is our uh, community portal as well as our file sharing system. It is a place for you to go and upload all the things that you design and share them amongst each other. Does it have to be a file for a Bruce 
is a printer. No. Of course not. It can work for any printer. So you have a CR10, great. Upload your stuff to Bruce printers, it will still print it. Everyone can share it, everyone can use it. You have a MakerBot, even better. Upload your stuff to Bruce printers. So we, of course, would love it if you guys have, have a Bruce printer. And again, with the mini, there's very few excuses at this point. But it's not required that you have a Bruce printer to use Bruce printers. There's a lot of people confused on that. Let's make that very cut and clear right now. It's for everyone and every printer. Um, but these guys are committed. We are committed to making a community platform that allows us to bring back those roots of sharing files, sharing ideas, sharing the, the things that make it easy for other people to get started in 3D printing. You know, there's probably not many of us here that the very first thing that we ever printed was something that we designed. Most of us probably went to Thingiverse or some other platform and downloaded something and printed it. Why? Because when you get started with 3D printing, you don't know how to design things for 3D printers. The easiest way to do that is to print a bunch of things and understand what works and what doesn't. We're trying to simplify that. You know, there's a lot of um, a lot of kind of question about the, the G code that you know requirement or not really requirement, but but the G code ask that we ask for people. You know, when you when you post to Bruce printers, post your G code. The reason that we're doing that is we want to make it super easy to make sure that someone prints a file gets the thing that they expect to get. And if you've verified your G code, you've, you've run it, hopefully when they run it on their, their machine, they will get the same thing that you got. Is it a perfect solution? No, not right now, but we're working on it. You know, this is, this is a, a thing that we're building, and we need your feedback to know how to make all of that better. And to make it so that you know we can kind of compete with this behemoth that is thing for so three plus million things out there. We need all of you. We can't do it ourselves. We've got to get you guys putting your things on on Bruce Bruce. It's the only way to kind of like press the wave and make everyone else do it. You know, everyone who's here at this show isn't just kind of into 3D printing, right? <laughs> like, like we are way over the edge there. We are the people that are driving what everyone else is doing. So if you guys are, are taking that jump, taking that leap, and saying, okay, I'll still post the thing of verse because it gets a lot of traffic and everything else, but to make sure that that day that Stratasys puts the little switch and the thing of verse goes down for good, not just for the weekend or you know however long it goes down at a time now, back up your things by posting the boost of We love it if we were the only place that had it, but you know, let's let's be realistic. Right now, we just need more stuff, and we don't have the numbers and the traffic, but that's all on, on all of us. We need to post more things. Um, we're super excited about it. We are committed to developing more resources, more tools, make it the tool that we all need. You know, there's plenty of things that all of us hate at this point about Thingiverse, um, but you're not going to get a better Thingiverse at this point. You're only going to get worst thing of those things die, you know. Uh, customizers never actually back into a functioning, a functioning way. Um, but as you let us know those features that you need, you know, I've heard a bunch of you tell me, where's my like button? I need to add likes. Well, Joe, where's our like button? Let's get a like button on there. You know, we can we can feed that back through, we can get that to the developers, and we can make this the community portal that we we deserve at this point. We've been at this for too long to like not have a good place to share our files. And you know, I talked to a bunch of people this this weekend because you know some people are like ah sharing files, whatever, I don't want to make my designs. But you know, 3D printing, desktop 3D printing's only really been around for about 10 years now, right? CNC, laser cutting, you know, these things have been fairly accessible for a lot longer than that. The, you know, the patents had already expired that made it easy for a lot of these things to happen. But we're not at a CNC convention. We don't see events like this around CNC machines, around 3D, or, or around laser printers. We see them around 3D printers. And why is that? I believe it's because of this open sharing system that was created by, uh, by Adrian right off the bat when he said, uh, 
you know, I'm going to start the RepRap thing and it's all going to be open source. And this idea that we are sharing our prayers, we're sharing our designs, but we're sharing the things that we make with them and making it easier for everyone to get started. This is really crucial to this. And if it goes away, it's really going to hurt this community. So we just, we need to have a new model. Prayers and prayers is our own. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's my rant. That, that's my thing. Who here knows what FreeMF is, or which one of you here used? Okay, that's that's good. I expect it works. So just a quick pitch: uh, if you go into Bruce's slides from your file safe, it makes a FreeMF file. So what is a FreeMF? It's basically zip SDL, but it also has all of the settings that you set up in Bruce's slides. So it has custom supports. It has small modifier meshes. Just whatever you do, it's in there. So imagine that you spend you know 15 minutes setting up a really difficult print. Well, if you just share the FreeMF file instead of SDL, the next person that down downloads it, well, maybe he's not going to print it directly as you set it up, but you can just easily switch it from PLA to ASA in like three seconds. You have all of the custom settings that the original creator made in there, and Rusha Printer supports FreeMF right out of the box, so if you've never used FreeMF, please give it a go. The king is dead, only the king. I think it's deal, it's not okay. Bye. This is actually like super optimal to me just now. Like I just released a, uh, a license plate border cover thing for, for Brusa fans. It's, you know, Brusa 3D license plate uh, holder. And uh, I, I posted that up as a 3MF because I did a lot of tricks in the slicer side, but I also only had PLA at the time. And so my G code posted up as PLA, which is fine for a license plate holder in the winter, but I realized in the summer I probably didn't want something a little bit more, you know, be tolerant. Um, but to make sure that everyone could access the, the way I set up the print, I did upload and post the 3MF file, which, you know, is, is super great because now you can pull that down, open it, bruise the slicer, just change the, the filament type to ASA, print it out, and you're set to go. And you don't have to set up all my supports and all my, my top layer settings and everything else for it. So, yeah, that is a, a really good point. And, you know, thank you for, for, for making that. So, questions? You guys have any any thoughts any questions come on Jeff you can sit on the side of the stage it's on here good Well, we are talking about this for a long time, but uh, 
as uh, as the landscape is kind of changing, it is still quite difficult for us. Uh, and also, uh, make it. If we, I'll just say. Basically. I have some answers for that too. I mean, yeah. So. Do we need it? Eventually, yes. It's been, there's certain markets it's very hard for us to enter without having any kind of U.S. entity, any kind of U.S. distribution, things like that. The education market is hard in the U.S. without having those things. But, you know, one of the things that we have to keep in mind is, you know, China's able to make cheap machines because of geography, because of the way, where they are, the, the way the, the laws are, the way the economy is, everything else. To, to be quite honest, until you've been abroad, you don't realize, like, how much the, the geography there and the, the ability that they are to manufacture in the Czech Republic makes it easier for them. And so it, it would be wonderful, but right now it's, it's not as easy as just so the factory. So the point I was going to make is that, I mean, we are growing as fast as we can. We can take me out uh, 450 to 460, it's, it's fluctuating a bit. Uh, people. And we are still, all the previous we made, people are just, you know, we, are, we still have they do. So, uh, the point is, if we make our house, we, we can make two printers to ship here. It, it doesn't make sense yet. And we simply kind of, uh, kind of double the production in one month, or two months, or three months. Uh, I mean, it looks nice, uh, the idea. Uh, we have to grow all the parts of the company in, uh, same ratio. So if we would, I mean, we would uh, contract manufacturers, uh, but we would, have, we would have, we would be able to support all the printers which we would ship at the same level. So we have to train new support stuff and everything has to grow as the ecosystem. So maybe we will be able to finally, after some years, uh, have Since we were talking about flowers, um, 
minus it, like still exists, like minus it fans and they don't seem to care too much about it. So, so I have a theory. Uh, and that theory is is that one of maker bots, you know, kind of tried and true systems or, or customers right now is the education base. And they've done a lot of education uh, uh, like curriculum and things that are uploaded to Thingiverse. And I think as long as they are still selling printers, you know, fairly well to the education market, which is, don't get me started about. Um, I, I think right now it still makes sense for them to keep it going. But, you know, they've made it quite clear that what their interest is the education market and the industrial engineering market. The industrial engineering market doesn't post things to Thingiverse because everything's a trade secret, right? Everything's a product. So if the education market goes, there's no reason for it to, to, to stay in my opinion. You know, best case scenario is they put it up for sale, but I think I think more likely scenario if you look at things is they solve the earth and turn it off. Uh, uh, so I was looking at the handbook for the mini and it says it's meant to be a reliable workforce perfect for the farmers. Do you have any plans for releasing future orchestration software to handle? Maybe if you came at the beginning of the talk. <laughs> <laughs> He's a friend of mine. I'm allowed to give him the credit. It's fair. So, uh, no, yeah, absolutely. We're gonna we're going to release our uh, our software. He can tell you when, or probably not. But sometime we're gonna release our software. So uh, I love my brothers and sisters. It's, it's been a two, it's been a 2S, it's been a 2.5S and a And um, I, I wonder if you could release the best practices for vacants. That would keep it in two. So we have to be. Do you read the manual? <laughs> no, pass the part where it tells me to eat the hair about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Tom, Tom, Tom Salado or somewhere here. He can, he can tell us how to read manuals. <laughs> Yeah, Tom, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I've got to like start wearing parts out, right? So if, you know, I, I need to reprint parts just out of out of sheer. It's got that analogy right now. Well, and, and keep keep in mind, like we've also kind of upgraded the, the material that we're making the machines out of. You know, we've moved on to that G and, and everything else. So even just reprinting some of those from that that base machine that you had to begin with has has some real advantages also. So and always if in doubt, just ask the HTML. And uh, if you've been in the booth, you've probably heard me talk about this over over the, the course of weekend that you had. You bring up a, a good point here that I like to remind people. You know, a lot of us think about 3D printing as like this incredible new technology. So we take type of technology and we equate technology to our computers. And, you know, especially nowadays with solid state drives and things, we don't really have any moving parts. Our computers are are, are you know, solid state devices that, that last really, really long time and really well. Um, 3D printers are more like our cars. They have moving parts. They have moving parts that are under high stresses because of all the heat and everything else that we put them on. So we make great printers. We, we support our printers very well. But are, are our printers going to, to need maintenance? Are they going to break? Are they going to wear down? Yeah, of course. They're, they're just like our cars. Our cars do the same things. So keeping it, just like you need to change the oil on your car, you need to lubricate your rods. Just like your belts get loose on your car and you're, you hear your neighbor squeaking down the cul-de-sac, you've got you've to tighten up the belts on your printer too. There's things that are going to happen. You're going to have to have, to have a maintenance schedule. So you know, don't be upset about it. It's, it's the reason for it. Now, now with the mini, you can get a second printer. Physical uh, uh, college. It's very 
film uh, in, in Europe. And um, the guys in the computer graphics program, they would, they are, are finished the program with the corporation with us. And it's been like just like three weeks before the palette release. But yeah, eventually it will get out. Uh, it, it has this feature that you can divide the triangles, so yeah, just not, some, not just select your faces, but if you have like a cube which is like two triangles, you can still paint them and separate the object. It will, it will get, it will still take some time to get into uh, like the shipping standard we have for Slicer, because it was basically a student cooperation, but it will be, it will, will be released. That's awesome. I didn't know that. That's awesome. I have to have some secrets. Some secrets. I thought we had no secrets. Yeah, we, we, we just agreed on that we will be publishing it like literally a week ago. Come on. You got the great Joseph Bruce in front of you. No questions.